A Rube Goldberg machine starts with the toy train pulling ball one and a pudding cup upwards. It reaches the ink campaigns and rolls down. It goes into the tube, triggers ball two, and falls into the cup. Ball two then follows. Together, they lift the wooden block up and three marbles roll down into a marble racetrack. The marbles hit the dominoes. The dominoes hit the stopper, allowing a ping pong ball to roll down some ink campaigns and levers. Ball three, which is the ping pong ball, hits some dominoes. The last domino falls, bringing down the metal chain, which works as a stopper for the toy car. The car hits a vertical lever, and the lever hits a flat stick of some books, allowing ball four to hit another stick. This is repeated three more times. The last ping pong ball rolls down a book, bounces onto a track, and hits some dominoes. As a stopper for the twisted yarn with a stick thing, it falls, allowing the thing to unwind itself. The stick hits some dominoes, and the last domino pushes a golf ball into a cup. Heavy enough, the cup falls to the ground, moving the blue car paced on a ramp. The other red car slides down and hits a pencil that works as a lever to hit the gun's trigger. A needle shoots out of the gun and pops the balloon. My 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 7th, 10th, 14th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, and 28th steps are all in crime planes. All of the balls I used in my machine are wheels. They include balls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and the marbles. Steps 1, 5, 15, 26, and 27 are wheel and an axles. I used levers in steps 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 22, 25, and 29. and pulleys are used in steps 1, 6, and 27. A screw is used in step 23, and a wedge is used in the last step. As the train pulls the pudding cup up, its kinetic energy increases. The gravitational potential energy of bar and carried inside the cup increases as it's being lifted up, but its kinetic energy stays at zero since it's not moving. It reaches the inclined planes and rolls down the first set, its KE increases. When it reaches the second set, its KE fluctuates as it slows down while rolling. The thermal energy increases as ball one rubs against the chopstick. As it falls through the tube, its kinetic energy spikes up. Simultaneously, its GPE is decreasing. The second the ball one drops into the cup, its KE drops to zero. Ball two drops through a tube after being triggered by ball one. Its energy transfer is the same as ball one. The marbles roll down the incline planes and marble race tracks with their KE increasing and GPE decreasing. Its kinetic energy fluctuates a little when it changes direction in the track. The moment the marble hits the first set of dominoes, thermal energy spikes up. GPE now stays at zero since the dominoes are on the ground. Dominoes fall and KE fluctuates while TE increases as each domino collides with the domino in front of it. The last domino pushes a stopper and ball three in a tissue box rolls down some incline planes. Its GP decreases as KE increases. Next it rolls down two levers, slowing down when the levers are going up or down like a seesaw. KE fluctuates. Thermal energy increases each time it hits the set of an incline plane while changing direction or pushes the block away. Ball 3 hits the second set of dominoes and the dominoes fall. KE fluctuates as thermal energy increases as each domino collides with the domino in front of it. The metal chain falls to the ground, causing an increase in KE and TE and a decrease in GPE. The car then slides down an incline plane. Its KE increases while GPE decreases. Its thermal energy spikes up when it hits the vertical lever. Its KE drops to zero when it stops moving. The vertical lever then hits a horizontal lever, causing an increase in thermal energy. Then balls 4, 5, 6, and 7 each rows an incline plane into the ground. KE increases as GPE decreases. T spikes up a little when they hit the wooden sticks. Boss of the bounces onto a track and rolls down. As it bounces, its GPE goes up and down. Thermal energy spikes up a little when it bounces off the floor and when it hits the track surface. KE decreases a little when the ball changes direction. Boss of it hits the dominoes and the dominoes fall. This set of dominoes energy transfer is the same as the previous one. Last domino releases the twisted yarn and the yarn and winds itself, causing an increase in KE. The stick attached on the yarn then hits another set of dominoes. It behaves the same as the previous ones. The last domino hits a ball, causing a spike in TE. The ball roasts in a cup and drops down. Its KE increases as it's dropped to the ground, whereas its GPE decreases. The blue card that's attached to the cup with a piece of blue string on an incline plane is moved sideways. Its KE increases. Next, the red card slides down a ramp and hits the lever. Its KE goes up, whereas its GPE goes down. Finally, the needle is released. Its GPE increases along with KE and TE as it flies upwards quickly and collides with air particles. KE spikes up when it pops open the balloon. Here the pulling changes direction from 270 degrees to 0 degrees. Blue car is pulled to the right and the red car slides down. As the red car slides down, the needle shoots in the opposite direction. The blue cardboard has a relatively large surface area than the other dominoes and therefore experiences more air resistance. Decreasing its speed prevents the yarn from spinning ball 3, which later prevents ball 3 from falling out of the incline plane. The bumpy surface of the tube slows down the marble so that they won't go flying out of the funnel. 
So calculate the force exerted on the floor by the metal chain and time how long it took for the entire chain to fall and weigh the chain. Then I measure the distance from the tabletop to the ground since some of the chain's force is exerted on the table. I only need a portion of the chain's weight in the time it takes. It gives me a ratio of 39 over 154. So the mass of a portion of the chain is 0.025 kilograms and the time it takes to fall is 0.69 seconds. Attempt acceleration and time to get the speed. Then attempt the speed and mass to get the momentum. Next, I divide it by time again in order to get the force, which is 0.245 newtons. I calculated the surface area of the chain spread on the floor, which is 0.0084 squared meters. The force I calculated previously is 0.245 newtons. Then I divided the force by the surface area, which gives me a pressure of 29.17 pascals. So I measured the distance moved from a domino standing to lying on the floor. To get the momentum, I weighed the domino and assuming the point of contact is 0.05 seconds, I timed it by 9.8 meters per square seconds in the domino's mass. So I get the momentum of 0.0098 kilograms meter per second. Next, I divided the momentum by 0.4 seconds, which gives me the force of 0.0245 newtons. Therefore, an work done equals 0.0016 joules after our time, force, and distance together. Bye!